Chapter 8 It is a mild summer day as summer just greets the surrounding area. Princess Mirasami of the royal family of Fendragle is at her isolated shorefront castle enjoying the beautiful day. It is misting rain so she carries a straw umbrella. She passes the gardens on both sides of the path to the right of the castle leading to, a trop to the tropical woods. The lighthouse behind the, behind the castle can be seen. The story of the princess is a strange one. Her father, Queen Gla her father, King Gladys, has gone somewhat mad in these days and has granted his daughter complete control over Fendrakel's vast armies and comes to her with all war advice, but she is always short on answers. She is only 13 years old and only knows a tranquil life of ease among her family and a few friends. Fendrakel is the southernmost empire of Ascadia. It's part of Ascadia, but maintains a tenuous freedom from the rest of the world. Its jungles are riddled with dangers and savages looking to harm the innocent passerby. Mirasami walks slowly past the little trees in the garden, twirling her umbrella on her shoulder, stopping sometimes to jump in small puddles. She walks up to a guard posted on a side door and bushes. Come walk with me into the woods, guardsman, says Murasami. The guard excitedly replies, Aid, your highness. The two set foot on the edge of the jungle mixed with moderate forest growth. They make their way to the weeded path that leads to the docks, way down to the coast. Upon arriving to a partially empty spot in the woods, they are met by a heavily armed archer with a coach. Halt! Who goes there? Inquired the, in, inquired the stranger to the princess and the guard. The guard angrily asked, What are you doing skulking around so close to the castle? Princess Mirasami looks down at the two dead face serpents and yells, How could you? The man smirks and asks, Friends of yours? They will bring a high price for me. Ha! Huh. The man who had killed the two face serpents, male and female, handed the guard a permit. He looked it over and approved of it. Frowning over at Mirasami, she ran off crying towards the way of the castle and the man with the coach started hauling the carcasses away, wrapped up. The guard noticed a nest where the trees meet, with a small egg there. Knowing these face serpents probably made it, and realizing the exotic beast hunter missed the egg for some reason, he swooped it up, nest and all, and headed back towards the castle again. Morning came, Mirasami laid over and opened her eyes to see the nest on her mantle. Her eyes widened and she jumped out of the bed. Just as she did, the guard peered in from the wall beside her door. It is a face serpent, your highness. I thought you might like to take care of the little guy since its parents met with an untimely end. It was the least I could do. The princess celebrates and, and screams, thank you, oh thank you. I will name him Arond, my very own. King Gladys walks in to kill the excitement. Hello, dear. And at ease, soldier. Mirasami hides the nest while her back is turned to her father. So, Mirasami, how are our forces in the west? asked the King Gladys, scratching his head. I don't know, father, replied Mirasami. Gladys snarked. Well, if you don't, who does? He skipped out of the room and into his red velvet throne room. He sits down from a suspended and from a from a, from a suspended platter connected to his throne, he sips something from the top cut of a skull. Delighted, he yells, Can I get some more, please? Servants scramble back and forth. A man is escorted by two guards side to side with weapons drawn, their golden armor gleaming as they pass by the throne room torches. They make haste towards the king. This man was captured looking around the grounds, Your Highness. Shall I put him to the sword? King Gladys shrugs and says, Let him speak. It is the exotic beast hunter that Mirasami met in the woods. He drops his guard and implores the king to let him have the egg that his daughter stole. Just as he did, however, the king signaled and the guard stabbed him on her shoulder with their swords, blood spilling out beside the center carpet. Gladys jumps up and runs to his daughter's room. He keeps yelling, scrambled eggs. He pushes, pushes his daughter aside down onto the floor. Right after this, realizing that the king is going to cook his gift to the princess, the guard thrusts his sword into the back of the king's neck. 
The king tenses and falls to the ground. He is no more, and his madness dies with him. More guards rush into her room and raise hands for battle, but Mirasame quickly yells, At ease now! The guards, confused, sheath their weapon and signal the others. The day goes on, and the men prepare for Gladys's funeral rites. What is your name, soldier? asks Mirasame. Renault, says the man. She picks up the nest with the egg and slowly walks toward her dad's vacant throne and places it there, looking up at the pane windows on the wall behind the throne's wall. Goodbye, father. She tilts her head down and pats the egg. The ruination of, of, the ruination of, of, of Fendraggle seems imminent, and the government is set up in a strange way to govern. Princess Mirasami inherits the throne now, and already has the military. It is only a matter of time before she issues orders. Renault escorts her out of the castle, and they sit. Why did you kill my father, Renault? She starts to cry a little. Why? Renault answers with his head down a little. I do not know, Your Highness. Spur of the moment, I suppose. Your father was mad. I have seen it for many nights now. Mirasami smiled and dried her tears. Yes, he was. It is about time someone competent ruled in his stead. Do you think that could be me? Mother is on a diplomatic mission to Escadia. We should keep this a secret until she returns. This changes everything. Mirasami looks at him and then looks away, ex exclaiming, You have my full pardon, Renault. You saved Aaron, and I thank you. I loved my father, but he had gone too far this time. Hopefully my mother's authority does not overshadow mine. I do have the military, but she is a politician. I just don't. I just don't know. I just. I just don't know. Renault laughs. I will accept my fate either way. Now let us put you to bed. It has been a very busy day today. Mirasami agrees and vows to make Renault a knight captain of the castle. Knight captains cannot be executed. Only trial by combat is allowed. The day becomes night, and Mirasami sleeps restlessly in her bed, crying about her father and thinking about the responsibilities that she does not want but they are not something she is used to. Aaron is safe in his nest, and, and the castle goes on surprisingly like it always does, save for a lot of talking in the night. While the chaos between Escadia City and Fendragle builds, Mirasami's mother, Queen Lida, is in a council meeting in Escadia itself to help calm the rising tensions between King Hevar and Gladys, who have been bitter with each other for many long years. The council has members from many places throughout the region, including Silverstone, High Post, and a couple of court wizards, even one from Murek, as well as a member of the Tempest Guild. King Hevar himself sits at the center of this argument. What is to be done about this outrage, says King Hevar. Lita then replies as bickering is afoot all throughout the table. My husband is not together in the head, good sir. He means nothing by it. He was only boasting. King Hevar appears seriously and says, No boast, it is a threat, and I will answer. Just as he spoke, a loud horn sounded in Escadia City, heard far away, then another heard close. The arguing stopped, and they all looked at each other, puzzled and surprised. They scrambled out of the large room atop the tower and looked out into the windows to see the city engrossed in battle and bloodshed, people being thrown on the sword, others being thrown aside, such as women and children. Leader recognized the uniforms as Fendraggle soldiers. She did not mention it, fearing her connection to the attack. Usually an attack would take place by night, but this attack took place in the late, hour, late afternoon hours. Archers firing from high places trying to stop the Fendraggle advance, but to no avail. Next to Silverstone City, f f next to Silverstone City, Fendraggle had the best military in the world, some of the finest. Horses would be seen with both fighters and people trying to leave the city. Some people stood and fought alongside the Escadians. Fendragle forces brought in their siege engines to crumble the walls, for Escadia had layers, layers that needed to be destroyed to get into the central governing tower. Armed guards made their way to the floor and Lita was on eventually, and one of them held up a paper and read, By decree of the ruler of Fendragle's armed forces, I hereby arrest Lita Gladys. Sorry, Your Highness. Lita, shrug, sh Lita shook the man off her arm and said, This is an outrage. Where's my husband? The soldier that read the arrest then replied, Dead, Your Highness. Oh my, well, is that so? Why, who? 
I mean, very well, I will go willingly. She was put into a caged carriage on its way back to Fendraggle. As she rode ever so slowly past the devastation of the city, seeing the carnage, she saw her daughter with bodyguards, guarded by the elite guard. She was standing beside one of the siege machines, using it. A face of absolute anger came over Lita, and she now realized what was taking place and what is now taking place. Stark reality sank in, and it was Gladys himself who brought this on Escadia and on his wife.